I worked on, on crossing people. I delivered people within the United States to different places such as Chicago, California, Denver, New York, Pennsylvania, Atlanta, and so on. I was the driver, and then I became independent of them. Many people from my town knew what I did, and I started to meet more people. Then I worked by myself. I crossed them directly from Mexico to wherever they wanted to go. These were small groups. For example, I worked with a group of 30 people every two weeks. There was a fee depending on the destination. It was $1,000 to Los Angeles, California, and all around California, and 1200 to Chicago or New York because it was father. The payment was made once they crossed the border, not before. We traveled by land or by plane. At that time it was easier and people preferred to travel by plane because it was faster. Therefore, we sent them by plane to their destination. By land, the trip was longer because we had to travel around the states. There were many states to cross and to get to Chicago, and it was riskier. On the other hand, traveling by plane only took a moment, and it was fast, much faster. Sometimes we crossed them in line like American citizens. While American citizens crossed the border, they did it as well, but it was not so common because it was more expensive and people didn't want to pay too much money. It was less risky because they didn't have to walk through the mountains. Most of the times, we walked. Once we were in the United States, we rented hotels, or we had a house or a fellow who rented us a house. However, I also worked from Douglas to Phoenix. Sometimes I crossed two groups a day. I went for them and then I brought them back. I went back and forth. Was everything ready? Yes, and I had a few contacts. I was told, there's a person in a certain place. Then I went and took them. I did my job, but I also took other jobs. They paid me $200 per person to take them to Phoenix. Sometimes I took 12 or 15 people in a van that I drove. After that, I came back and took the group from Mexico. I did it every 15 or 22 days. Every time we went, we took different routes. We knew sidewalks, shortcuts, and ranches. Ranches were the places where we took people once we had crossed the border. We walked a short distance, and we had everything ready through telephones. Once we crossed, there were people who helped us over there. They sent us drivers, and we took the people who stayed in the ranches. We had a lot of problems in the ranches because the owners shot at us because we entered their lands. In Arizona, they shot at us and forced us off their property at least twice because they were angry at the trespassing. There were some times when it was hard. There were some places where you couldn't cross, and we had to wait until there was a change of shift, and that was what we mostly did. Sometimes there were police posts and we avoided them by walking. We knew those territories well. This point was important because I was not alone. There were more people involved. We had checkers. We paid them for access to a safe road, to give us food, to avoid police posts, and so on. They were legal people, and we told them, I want you to check this road. There were police posts there, and we sent people to those places. I told them to go as if they were traveling to Benson or Tucson, and they checked all along the way. They told me, hey, there's a police post in a certain place, and so we avoided it, traveling a different way. But we always had people checking the roads to have a safer trip. We paid them 100 or 200 dollars if they checked the entire road, and they called us if there was something odd. If there was something odd, we detoured or waited a while. Once, you told me that crossing the border depended largely on immigration police. Was there a border worker called El Buena Onda? We called him El Buena Gente because he, well, there's a lot of immigration policemen who did their job correctly, and there were others who did not. What we did depended on shift changes. For example, if that policeman's almost changing shift, and he's only got one hour to leave, 
He wouldn't catch us, because if he caught a big group, he'd have to take a long time to detain us, fill out the paperwork, take us to the office, register our fingerprints. And so getting off work wouldn't be at 7 or 8 a.m. It would take much longer. That was why that policeman thought, it's better to let this group cross. And that was the schedule we followed. That's the way we crossed. They allowed us to do so. There was an immigration policeman called El Migra Buena Gente. He was very well known because you could see him when he patrolled the border. Had you ever had problems with territory invasion by coyotes? Yes, yes I had. How did you deal with it? We had security. We paid for it. As long as you paid for security, was this problem solved? It was. We were given a password, and then we could cross because this way we paid the road fee that was required. If you didn't pay that fee, they detained you and discovered who was the leader. Any way, they would find you. In order to avoid problems, we paid a fee to cross wherever we wanted because the big organizations, they controlled it. They had the power, and therefore we avoided being caught. We paid for security, and therefore the road was totally open. Had you ever been asked to deal drugs? Sometimes I was asked to, but I didn't have to be connected with drugs. Once I rented a truck that had drugs, so I talked to the person because he rented us cars and these cars were equipped to carry things. I didn't want to deal with drugs, however, since that person was, uh, how can I explain it to you? You know, there's a car full of people. The car is carelessly checked, but it has a secret compartment in which drugs are hidden. We tried to work with one person and then another, but we knew who worked well and who worked with drugs. Once we realized it, we stopped working with that person because it was not a good deal. We only worked with known people, and if something wrong happened, we would be easily identified because we just crossed people from my town. Had you ever been in prison? I had, around three times, but it was only for a short time. It was a short time while I waited for my deportation, for around five or six days at the most, or even three days. Sometimes I was there for only one day. Deportations were fast. I had never been there for several months. I didn't get too many deportations. I was detained only for crossing the border as an illegal immigrant. They caught all of us. They only detained me and I was deported for crossing illegally rather than being reported as a coyote. I was only deported because I had been caught several times both legally and illegally. You told me that when you were detained, they detained all of you together and the people you were crossing never denounced you, did they? Never. Since we knew each other, for example, if a person doesn't agree or is intimidated by an immigration policeman, this person's also detained because there has to be a witness who has to testify. Therefore, that person would also be detained. This way we avoided the process of being detained. We really treated people well and they didn't have any reason to denounce us. If all of us are caught, all of us leave together. That was how it worked. The Border Patrol always treated us well, as long as we did whatever they asked for. We'd have to do what they asked for because they told you what to do. Do this and this and I won't mistreat you. They never mistreated me. They detained us normally and they never mistreated us because we didn't try to escape. When they asked us something, we answered them. We had to answer whatever they asked us. Were you ever afraid of being caught? I wasn't afraid. I felt, how can I explain it to you? I wasn't afraid because they didn't do anything to you. What I felt was anger because you had to start from the beginning. I had to go back to cross the border again. That was all. 
When I started, for example, in most towns, there was no wall or anything. There was a fence in Agua Prieta, Sonora. To cross to Douglas, there were neither walls nor barriers, nothing. You were able to cross easily. Sometimes you didn't even realize that you were already in the United States. When you were caught, you only asked your name, and they told you to go back. They didn't register you in a certain place. There, they filled out paperwork, and you made up a name because they didn't investigate or register your fingerprints. Did security improve after September 11, 2001? It did, especially at the airports. We worked a lot at airports. It was more profitable because it was faster and we finished earlier. It was less risky than two or three days by land. However, after those attacks, after September 11, 2001, airports improved their security and we couldn't get people into airports because they asked for official IDs and we didn't have them. We had IDs, but the ones the currency exchanges, Casas de Cambio, provided. Those were valid at first, but by the end, the IDs were not valid anymore because anyone could make up identities and create them. But the situation's different. Everything's changed. <laughs>